Hey, this is Ben Tate for CG Tuts, and in this modeling tutorial, we're going to be modeling this RIM 116 rolling airframe missile launcher. Okay, and this is the kind that you'd find on the deck of a battleship. So it's an anti aircraft uh, missile launcher. All right, and as you can see, it's pretty complex. Uh, we have quite a few pieces here. Um, some of them are pretty simple, and others are pretty complicated, uh, like these pieces down on the base here. Okay, so what I did was kind of break it into three major pieces. Uh, we have the barrel, the legs, and the base. All right, so we'll start out on the barrel. Uh, we'll block that in, uh, add in the end pieces here in caps. Then we'll do the grill on the side, as well as a little bit of the base uh, piece underneath. Then we'll go on to the legs and add in the doors and handles and some of the bolts. And we'll just keep working our way down to the base We'll block some of this out, uh, do some of this corner detail here, and this will definitely be the most complex piece of the entire model, this uh, base part down here on the corners. Okay, so we'll work our way down, boxing it out, and uh, once that's done, we'll come back and add in uh, additional smaller details, all right? And this will be about a six-hour uh, tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to be using 3D Studio Max 9. And if you have that version or another version, uh, you shouldn't have any problems following this tutorial. Um, and it also, if you have a different software package, uh, I think you should probably still be able to follow along. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit of a journey to get this done in six hours, but uh, we'll do the best we can, and this will be the final result of this tutorial. So let's jump into Max and get started. Okay, so here we are in Max, and before we get going, let's just take a look at a reference picture here. And uh, I have a few of these that I found on uh, the internet, so I'll include a link of where you can download them um, so you can actually follow along with this um, and be able to see them at full resolution. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is pretty complicated. Uh, we have a number of small pieces that we're going to need to model. Um, as well as some pretty complex parts like this base piece here. All right, so I think what I'll do is start off with the barrel and uh, I'll try to box out some of the big pieces and uh, give them a bit of detail and then we'll uh, come back later on and add in smaller and smaller details. All right, and due to time constraints of the tutorial, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get all of these uh, small details in, but we'll do the best we can. Okay, so um, this will be pretty high res. Uh, some of these parts are going to be turbo smooth. Um, where we don't need to add turbo smooth, we'll try to get away without it and keep it pretty lightweight if we can. But uh, the poly count is going to be pretty high because we have a lot of bolts and uh, rivets as well as uh, a lot of plating and uh, small details like these hinges and handles. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just start on the barrel and let's just get going on that. Okay, and we're going to be doing this completely blind. Uh, we don't have a blueprint to use. All right, so I'm going to be eyeballing uh, the whole thing. And uh, we'll also just be using generic max units. I'm not going to be using uh, any kind of real world scale. Okay, so we're just going to size uh, pieces to other pieces that we've already modeled. All right, just to uh, try to match this as close as we can. Okay, so let's start on the barrel. So let's go into the uh, left view here. And uh, I'm going to have to go a little bit faster on this than I have in some of my other tutorials uh, just to try to get all the pieces uh, done that we can. Okay, so let's grab a box and we're just going to drag that out in the left view here. And let's go a little bit of height and we'll just figure out uh, the size of this. And before we do, let's just uh, right click the move tool and we'll zero out the X and Y spinners just to center it to the world for us. Okay, and I'll just make it uh, a lot easier for us to clone parts around and stuff later on. Okay, and I'm also going to get rid of these uh, selection brackets with J and the grids with G, and let's just turn on our edge faces with uh, F4. Okay, and let's also center the pivot point on this. Okay, so hard tab, effect pivot only, centered object, and then we'll just click the button again to turn it off. And then we'll right click the move tool and we'll just zero out the X spinner again. Alright, so it's dead center of the world. Okay, and then we'll go into the modify panel here. And let's just see. Let's see for the height. Let's do. 
Let's do maybe 120. And for the length, let's do 300. And on the height, let's do let's do maybe 100 too. Okay, and I think that looks like a pretty good size to start with. So let's right click and we'll convert this to edible poly. And uh, let's take a little look at the reference here. You can see the top of this kind of angles up. Okay, we have it kind of sloping up. So let's get that in there. So let's go into poly. We'll select the top polygon and then we'll do extrude and we'll just bring that up a bit. Let's do maybe 35 and OK. And we'll go into the front view here and let me just get rid of the grids. Let's just go to scale and we'll just scale that in on the X axis. Alright, just to taper the top a bit. OK. And let's just bring that down a slight bit. And I'm just checking to see if this size is uh, about right here. Let's go to the polygon for a second and we'll just scale this a little bit longer on the X in the left view, right? Just a bit. Okay, I think that's about right. So let's go into uh, polygon. We'll turn on our back facing and we'll just select the end polygons on both sides. Okay, just those four. And we'll just delete those. We don't really need those right now. Okay, and we'll go down to the bottom here and you can see that the uh, bottom is rounded over right here. Okay, so let's select these two bottom edges. Okay, and we'll go into the uh, front view here. And let's just go down to chamfer. And we'll chamfer those. And let's bring this up a bit. And let's do maybe about eight or so on that. And then we'll hit apply and we'll just bring this down a bit. Okay, and you can see here in the perspective view, we'll just try to even these edges out. So let's do about 3.5 or something for the second one. And okay. And I'll just round over the bottom for us. All right. And let's go into uh, the left view here. We'll just drag right to these edges. And before we do that, let's actually turn off ignore back facing. Okay, so just grab all the center edges. And let's do a connect on that. And we'll do two segments. Let's just pinch those out towards the ends. Okay. And let's do let's do about fifty or so on that maybe. Uh, let's do 40. Okay, maybe 45. And I think that looks about right. So we'll hit OK. And let's also grab one of these edges here in the center and we'll do a ring. And we'll do that on both sides here. Alright, so just the edges on each side in the center. Okay. And let's add a connect, and we'll just do one segment here, no pinch, and let's just slide that down a bit towards the bottom. Okay, let's do about 75 or so, negative 75 on the slide for that, and OK. And then let's go into polygon here, and in the left view, let's just drag through these center polygons, all right? Just from the edge, we just add it up and around the top and down the other side. Okay, like that. And let's do an inset. And we'll bring that up quite a bit. Let's do about eight or so on that too. Okay. And okay. And in left view here, let's go into vertex. Okay, and you can see on the uh, reference picture here that we kind of have a small taper in at the top. It's a little hard to see in this one because it's a bit blown out, but let's see if you can see it in here. Yeah, it, it tapers in here, and then it's got a little bit of an inset here for. Uh, this grill stuff here. Alright, so let's just put that in. So let's select the top verts and we'll just move those in a bit. Alright, and I think I'll make this a little bit different than the uh, 
reference here, right? You can see we have kind of a, a rolling bottom here and a kind of a hard edge here that's um, sort of like a divot in there. All right, but I think I'm going to simplify that a little bit just for the sake of speed. Okay, so we'll bring the top verts in. Maybe something like that. And let's actually go into edge and select one of the top center edges and one of the bottom edges. And let's do a ring, right? So you have all the edges along the top and the bottom selected. And let's do a connect and let's just do one segment with no pinch or slide. All right, so we just have a, a segment going down dead center. Okay, we'll hit uh, OK on that and let's go into vertex. And just to make this easier, let's just uh, chop this in half. All right, so let's select all the verts on the left side of center in the front view and we'll just delete those for a minute. Okay, so we'll just work on half of this at a time. And because it's symmetrical, uh, we can just mirror it over and weld it up later on. Okay, so let's grab these verts here, these two and these two. Okay, and we'll just push those in a bit on the X. Okay, just like that. Let's look at this in the uh, front view maybe. Okay, I'm just going to pull those in. Right, and let's grab this one up here and we'll just move this over a little bit just to straighten that edge out. Right, and this actually kind of tapers out at the top. Let's see if you can see it. Right, we got a pretty hard edge on this one. Uh, this little model here looks a lot sharper than the actual uh, real rocket launcher, but uh, we'll use a combination of both these to uh, get this in. Let's just change that back to front. Okay, and let's see. Okay, let's go back into the left view here and let's just select these verts here. Okay, just these four. We're just going to scale these out a little bit on the X just to taper this edge. Alright, so just push those back a bit. Maybe something like that. And this will also give us a little bit sharper of an uh, edge here so that we can put the grilling in uh, behind that or next to it, okay? So just like that. All right. And let's maybe move these uh, bottom verts down just slightly, just these two here, just a little bit. Okay. And I think we'll grab the top ones here. And we'll just scale those a little bit more uh, towards the uh, center, okay? Just so we got a bit of a, a taper on this part, okay? Just like that. All right, I think that's the basic shape we're looking for. So uh, we're actually going to turbo smooth this part. So let's go into edge, and let's see. Let's uh, grab an edge here on the side, and let me just change the color of this. Okay, we'll grab an edge there and do a ring. And in the side view here, the left view, let's do a connect. We'll do two segments and we'll just pinch those apart. All right, we'll just get them pretty close to the outside edges. Okay, let's see. Let's do maybe about 97 on that and okay. And let's go into vertex and grab the top two verts there. This one here and these ones here. We're just going to scale that a little bit in just to taper the support edge out. All right, so it's not as sharp up here as it is down here, right? Just so we have a better transition uh, on the center part. Okay, and let's also select an edge here. All right, we'll do a ring on that, and that should go all the way around the uh, inset. All right, and we'll do another connect, and we'll do two segments, and we'll bring the pinch down a bit. All right. Let's do maybe 50 or so on the pinch. Okay. And okay to that. And let's see, let's uh, select an edge here. All right. I'll just do this in perspective so it's a little easier to see. Okay, I'll select an edge there, do a ring and a connect. And we'll do one segment. Actually, let's do two. And let's pinch those apart. 
and we'll do that pretty tight. Let's do that about 95 or so. And OK, and we'll do the same thing at this side. Select an edge here, do a ring, and just hit connect. OK. And we'll need to add uh, some of this way. So let's select an edge on the end of this uh, angled face here. Do a ring on that and a connect. And we'll do two segments on this one as well. We'll just bring this down a bit. Let's do maybe about 75 on the pinch for that one. And OK. And for the top here, let's select the front edge, do a ring and a connect. And we'll just do uh, another uh, connect with two segments and 75 on the pinch. And OK. Then we'll just select this uh, center support edge. And we don't really need to have that, so we'll just do a loop and we'll control backspace that out. All right, because this would be well to the other uh, half. So there's really no reason to have that there. And let's see. Let's also add one here under our inset. So we'll grab one of these edges here, do a ring and a connect. We'll just do one segment, no pinch, and let's just slide that up a little bit. We don't want this edge here to be super sharp when we're uh, done, so let's do about 60 and OK. And uh, I think that's probably all the ones we need. OK, let's get out of uh, edge and we'll put a turbo smooth on this. Let's do two durations and ice line. And we'll see how this looks. Okay. And that's a little bit uh, different than this one here, but uh, like I said before, just for the sake of speed, I'm just going to do a little bit simpler. Okay. So it looks pretty good for that half. So let's delete the turbo smooth. And we'll go into the front view here. And let's do a mirror. And we'll do a copy on the X and OK. And let's actually move that over just a bit. You can see it's overlapping here at the top. And that's just because I didn't have the pivot point centered. OK. So let's just line these up right there. Just these two edges on top of each other. OK. And then we'll attach this one to the uh, original piece. OK. And then we'll go into uh, vertex and in the front view we'll just drag right through the center verts. Okay. So just the edge, uh, the verts on this edge here and the edge along the bottom. Okay. Then we'll open up weld and uh, point one should be enough to weld the seam if uh, your edges were right on top of each other. All right. So we'll hit okay. And then we'll put another turbo smooth on here just to see if we have any uh, missed welds. Okay. So the two iterations and ice line. All right, and if you miss any welds, you'll probably see an artifact along the seam. Okay, but it doesn't look like we have any here, which is good. Okay, so let's just turn off the turbo smooth for a second. And let's see. Let's just pull the uh, border on the edge here on the front in just a bit, even though this will be covered up later on with the uh, a cap. Um, I think we should just pull the border in slightly just so this edge uh, is a little bit smoother and doesn't look so uh, sharp and thin. Okay, so let's drop down into Edible Poly. We'll go into Border and we'll just grab this border here, right, just around the, the hole. And we'll hold Control and convert that to an edge selection. And in the front view, I'm just going to go up to Scale and I'm just going to scale on the triangle holding Shift. Okay, and I'll just clone the edge in a bit for us, right, just like that. Doesn't need to be a lot. Okay, and we'll go around the other side, and we'll go to border again, and select this one, and then control click edge. All right, and in the front view, we'll just hold shift and scale this one a bit as well. Okay, just like that. All right, and then we'll uh, just grab one of the edges here and do a ring, and we'll add a support edge along this piece too. All right, whoops. So let's go down to connect and we'll do one segment, no pinch, and we'll just slide this up to the top a bit. And let's do maybe about negative 50 on this. Uh, we still want the edge to be a little bit soft, okay? So hit OK on that one and we'll do the same thing at the other end. I grab an edge there and ring and connect and OK. Alright, so let's turn on the turbo smooth and see how it looks. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, looks like all the edges are holding up good and we don't have any artifacting. Okay. Okay, so let's just name this and we'll call it barrel. And I'm just going to change the color to black. And I'm going to put a standard gray shader on there. So just hit M to open up the material editor. We'll uh, grab a blank slot and we'll just assign that. And I'm just going to change the fuse color to uh, a little bit of a lighter uh, gray. Okay. So let's take another look at the reference. And uh, the next thing we'll do is start working on the uh, end cap piece here. And as you can see, we have quite a few holes in that. Uh, normally when I build something like this, I, I would probably do it out of splines. Uh, but that can uh, take quite a bit of time to get rid of any artifacting. Um, usually when you have this many holes close together and then you uh, extrude the splines, you usually get a bunch of weird edges that you'll have to uh, take out and recut new ones uh, to get it to render properly. So I think it might actually be faster for us to actually do this out of poly modeling rather than splines. Okay, so let's try that. Right, so let's uh, turn off our turbo smooth on the barrel. And I'm just going to zoom in here on the end, and we'll drop down into Edible Poly, go into Edge, and let's just select an edge here on the uh, corner. Let's loop that. Okay, not the uh, either the support edges, the actual uh, outside ed, uh, edge. Okay, and with that selected, we're just going to uh, go down here to create shapes from, from selection. Okay, we'll just leave that name shape one, and we'll choose linear here. Okay, so the corners will stay sharp. And this will just uh, copy that uh, edge selection and it um, separate it out as a separate spline. Okay, so we'll just hit OK, get out of edge, and we can turn turbo smooth back on. All right, let's just hit H, and we'll select shape 01, and then we'll right click and hide unselect it. Okay, so we just have the uh, spline here. All right, and I just wanted to do that so that uh, we'll have a an idea of the shape at the end of the barrel, but we won't have to look through all of the uh, other geometry. Okay, so let's just zoom in on this. Right, and let's go uh, into shapes and grab a circle. And we'll just drag that out. Okay, and we'll figure out the size here. All right, and you can see we have a row of three, then four, three, then four, and so on. Okay, so let's see. Let's maybe do this about nine, maybe for a radius. Right, I think that might be about the right size. Let's do maybe 8.5. I just want to make sure we have enough room to uh, get all these in here. Okay, and before we start moving this around, let's actually go into uh, the crate panel here. And I'm just going to drag out a plane over top. All right, and I'm just going to do the width of our, our spline. Okay, and I'm going to change the segments to two each way. All right, and this will give us a uh, idea of where the center mark is for our uh, spline. All right, so let's use that as a guide to line up the circle. All right, I'm going to change the uh, color of the circle to black, and we'll just move it over and line it up with that edge in the center of the plane. Okay, so we know that it's centered to the uh, spline. All right, and with that done, let's go. Um, into the create panel and we'll uh, right click and convert the statable spline first. And we're just going to go over to interpolation and we'll change the steps to one from six so we have an octagon shape. Okay. And we're just going to use this as a guide to cut the hole into a uh, plane here in a second. Okay, so let's go in here and we'll grab another plane. Let's draw that out over top. Okay, and for the size on this, let's do, let's do maybe Try 20 by 20. And let's do maybe 21 by 21 just to give us a little bit more room. Okay. And we'll just line this up so that the segments are lining up with the corners of the circle here. So move that up and just make sure that the vertical line is lined up with the uh, bottom corner there. Okay, right here. So just like that. All right, and now we'll just select our. Uh, bigger plane in there and we'll delete that we don't need that anymore now that we have the center mark okay so let's select our plane and let's go into the modify panel we'll convert this to edible poly let's go down to cut and we'll go up to snaps and right click 
and we'll just check off vertex here and leave everything else unchecked. Okay, so we'll close that and we'll turn snaps on. And we're just going to uh, cut around this circle, clicking on each corner. Okay, and we'll finish on the top one and then right click to end. And then we'll turn off snaps and we can get out a cut here. All right, and I'll hit each and we'll select our circle and then we can delete that. Okay. And let's make this into quads. So let's go into vertex and grab these two corner guys up here and let's hit connect. And we'll do that for all four corners. Okay, so just connect those pairs up. And let's uh, go into polygon and we'll select the four polys for the hole. And let's do an inset and we'll bring that down a bit. Let's do maybe 0.3 on that just to get an inside support edge. And OK. And then we can delete those polys. Okay, so we just have this. All right, let me just change the color. Okay. So now what we're going to do is just hold shift and we're going to drag a copy of this to the left. Okay, and we'll just line up the uh, outside edges there. Try to get them on top of each other if you can. Okay, and then we'll choose copy and we'll just do one and okay. And then we'll hold shift again and drag another copy to the right and we'll line up those edges. Okay, and we'll do the same thing. All right, and now we'll select all three of the holes here and we'll do another shift drag. All right, and let's just go down on the Y and we'll line up the top and bottom edges. Okay, just like that. And we'll also just do one copy for this and okay. All right, and to get that fourth hole in there, we're going to need to uh, add another plane over here. So let's just move this to the uh, left, okay? And I just want to line up these vertical edges, okay? So just move it over and just line these ones up here, okay? So just like that. Then we'll select the end one here, and we'll hold shift and do another copy to the right, okay? Line up the edges and just choose one and okay. Right, and that'll give us our layout for the uh, rows we need, okay? Alright, so with that done, let's go to Attach. And we'll just attach all the planes together. Okay, then we'll turn Attach off and go into Vertex. Do Control A, and we just want to weld up the seams between them. So we'll open up the weld box here, and point 0.1 should be enough to weld them up. If you got the edges on top of each other. Uh, you can go up on this a little bit. You don't want to go too high, else you'll have the support edges snapping together, right? So we'll just uh, do something like 0.2 and OK. All right, and let's get out of vertex. And let's go into the hierarchy panel. We'll hit effect pivot only and center to object, and then we'll turn the button off. We'll just zoom in here a bit, and we'll hold shift, and we're going to drag another copy down on the Y and line up the bottom and top edges there, OK? Just like that. And we'll choose copy and we'll do two of these and OK. All right. So just like that. Then with that one selected, we'll go uh, in here, hit the attach button, select both planes, and attach. Then we'll go into vertex, select all the verts, and we'll do another weld. OK, we'll just do that point two and OK. All right, and we're a little bit off on the size here, so let's uh, go into edge. And before we actually size this, let's just grab these outside edges here. Okay, these two here, and these two. All right, so there's still six edges. And we'll go in here, and we're just gonna shift drag these over to line it up with the uh, plane above and below. Okay, just like that. We'll do the same thing on the left side here. Just grab these six edges and we'll shift drag that over. Okay. Just like that. Then we'll go into vertex, we'll do control A again, and we'll do another weld and OK. Alright, and let's just scale this up a little bit. I don't want to go too big. Alright, we'll move it down slightly. And let me just change the color of that spline back there so we can see it easier. 
Okay, let's see. Well, you can see these are pretty close to the bottom and pretty close to the sides as well. Uh, we have a little bit more of a gap at the top, so let's uh, figure out what we need. Let's, let's move this slightly down. Okay, I think I'll just do something like that, and we can scale it out a bit more. Okay, let's do something like that maybe. Okay, so let's go into edge and let's zoom in here on the top. Let's just drag right through these edges. Okay, then we'll hold Alt and deselect these ones. So we just have the top uh, line of them selected. And we'll just shift drag that up to match the spline behind there. Okay, and let's go down to the bottom here. And let's do the same thing. We'll select these edges and then deselect these ones. And I'm just going to move this up slightly. Okay, just so the corner is uh, right on the edge here. Okay. Then let's shift drag down again to about there and then we'll do it one more time and line that up with the bottom edge. Okay. And let's uh, select the uh, edges on the right side here and deselect these ones and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll just shift drag this over and line it up. And the same thing on this side. Okay. So just shift drag that over there. Okay. Then we'll go into vertex. And for the bottom here, let's let's grab this row here. Okay. And I'm just gonna line this up with the vert here. Or pretty close to it. So let's bring that down a little bit. Then we'll select the second from the bottom row. We'll check that. That looks pretty good right there. So let's grab all three of these guys. Okay, and I'm going to go to scale, and I'm just going to scale it in on the X a bit. Okay, we'll bring that in like about there. Just get this vert uh, lined up with the edge. Then we'll deselect the top row, and we'll scale again on the X. Right, get that one lined up. Oops. Okay, and then we'll just select the bottom row and we'll scale that in a bit more. Okay, and let's see here. Okay, so let's uh, maybe grab this vert up here and we'll grab the one on the other side. And we'll just move this down a bit and try to match it up a little bit better with the uh, spline. Okay, just so we have a vert on this corner where this uh, transition is. Okay. We'll go up to the top here, 